The poll is what the poll is. In all the polls seem to say that Nikki Haley beats Joe Biden by much more than Donald Trump does. I'm going to ask you the same question that Jake asked Nikki Haley today. Why doesn't that seem to matter? <laughs> I mean, this is the conundrum of this race for Republicans. We have seen there have actually been even bigger margins. At one point, point she was 17 points ahead of Biden in a head-to-head -head matchup. But the problem is, as we live in this, the right lives in this media ecosystem where they just believe a different set of facts. And if you surround yourself with folks just consistently saying Trump is the best fighter, he's the most capable, and you've got all these congressional endorsements saying that as well, I think voters start to believe it. And they'd honestly rather risk losing with Trump than winning with Nikki Haley. His rock-solid hold on the Republican Party feels unbreakable, despite the facts that Nikki Haley is hands down a better candidate. So, Bakari, last night James Carville was sitting with me here saying that the longer Nikki Haley stays in the race, the happier he is. Do you agree? Is she hurting Trump in a way that could help Democrats? First of all, the pride of South Carolina is actually in Auburn, Alabama. Her name is Don Staley right now, but that's neither here nor there. She's coaching tonight. Uh, but I will say this. I, I actually agree that, that Nikki Haley is doing the bidding of Democrats as we sit here today. And I'm sitting back and I'm enjoying it. The longer she stays in this race, she's weakening Donald Trump. I mean, uh, Donald Trump, and let's just say I, I play devil's advocate, and the devil really doesn't need any advocating. But the reason that Nikki Haley is doing far better in these polls is that Donald Trump has lived with the scrutiny since 2016. That light has, has been very bright on everything that he's done. We've gone in his history. We know who Donald Trump truly is. That light has not shone, shone brightly on, on Nikki Haley just yet. And so that's why she's still doing that much better than Joe Biden. But look, if the Republicans don't want to choose the best candidate or the person who fares the best, then so be it. This is the result of what uh, the Republican Party has become, which is, and I don't use this term lightly, but they become cult-like, um, just following people off a cliff. This, this, is not, uh, this is not rational. This doesn't make political sense. It doesn't make good common sense. But then you have people who are supposed to be intelligent, who represent, represent us in the halls of Congress, who are, who are following this circus as well. So look, as a Democrat, we want to run against Donald Trump. We want to run against Donald Trump badly. And thank you, Nikki Haley, for staying in the race and continuing to wound him. What specifically, Bakari, or how specifically does she wound him, do you think? Because she's using a lot of the same lines and, and attack lines about his character. And so what happens is if Bakari Seller says, look, uh, Donald Trump is old, uh, Donald Trump is beyond the pale, uh, Donald Trump, uh, the, the E. Jean Carroll uh, defamation suit was was right and just. Uh, when we begin to hear these character attacks on Donald Trump that come from somebody who has the conservative credentials of Nikki Haley, they may start to stick. Mm -hmm. Now, they're not going to stick with the people who re wear those little uh, red hats, but they will stick with people like suburban women, independent voters, college-educated white women, those people who we need to vote for Donald Trump. The best messenger on this may not be Bukhari Sellers or Joe Biden. I mean, the best messenger is actually Nikki Haley. Go Nikki. <laughs> One of the first times I think, Bakari, you've ever said that in South Carolina. Uh, Alyssa, you know, Jake, Jake Tapper also asked Haley about Trump's political action committee paying about $50 million, picking up the tab for his legal bills. Let's listen to that exchange. It is unconscionable to me that a candidate would spend $50 million in legal fees. It explains why he's not doing many rallies. He doesn't have the money to do it. It explains why he doesn't want to get on a debate stage because he doesn't want to talk about why he's doing it. It explains why he had a temper tantrum, um, you know, the election night of New Hampshire is because he wants me out of the race and he wants to be the presumptive nominee so that all of that cash starts going to him and he doesn't have to spend anymore. Where's like unconscionable temper tantrum? They weren't around. A, a month ago. Listen, they really weren't. I love this Nikki Haley and taking a kind of different approach than Bakari here. I think it's important for the country. I think hearing a credible conservative two term mm -hmm. former governor tell the truth about Donald Trump. But listen, he's running for president to stay out of jail and he is using his donors to pay off his legal <laughs> bills. Like that is literally what Do is voters happening. Care? I, the problem is, I'm not sure voters care. Just for an example, the Florida legislature, some Republican members, introduced a bill to make the state of Florida pay for his, his bills. Now, it's not going to happen. DeSantis would veto it. But that just shows the diehard fans. They think they are defending him. They think this is a witch hunt. They need to be with him. And once again, the fault does lie with other elected Republicans for actually saying these cases were witch hunts, for not coming out and telling the God's honest truth that he mishandled classified documents or the truth about January 6th. So we, re we are reaping what we're sowing here. And, yeah, he's going to enter this general election with the money, with, not with the money that he needs to win.
And, and Bakari, let me ask you a question specific to South Carolina, because there's a new South Carolina poll which shows Nikki Haley trailing badly there, 58 to 32. I always wonder about South Carolina, and maybe you can explain this to me. There's no party registration in primaries there, yet we don't see what we see in New Hampshire, where you've got this massive crossover voting in primaries there. Could there be this time? Could you see Democrats and moderates coming out to save her in the Republican primary? Absolutely not. I mean, Democrats aren't going to waste their time voting on February 24th. I mean, we're going to vote February 3rd in the Democratic primary. But the parties here, unlike maybe New Hampshire or some other states where there is just a shade of difference between Democrats and Republicans, there's a stark contrast between um, Democrats and Republicans in the state of South Carolina. And Democrats know Nikki Haley. I mean, we remember Nikki Haley for being the one who didn't accept Medicaid and, and hospitals shut down. I mean, we remember the assault on the poor. We remember the assault on women. We still have a quarter of shame under Republican leadership. So Democrats aren't fools and are going to play this national game. I, I do think, though, that to, to the point that was made a minute ago, uh, Donald Trump actually is very scared of Nikki Haley. And South Carolinians know uh, that, that Nikki Haley is a very shrewd politician. I think most people would want to see Nikki Haley and Donald Trump on the stage together, but we know that's not the case. I was watching Griselda the other night, and Pablo Escobar said that there was only one man that he's ever been afraid of, and her name was Griselda Blanco. I believe there's only one man that Donald Trump is afraid of, and her name is Nikki Haley. Bakari Sellers, as I said, for me, the pride of South Carolina. <laughs> Elizabeth Fair Griffin, great to see both of you tonight. Have a wonderful evening.